In this grade 8 video for common fractions, we're going to have a look at squares, cubes and roots. When it comes to squares and cubes, it helps a lot if you know the first few squares and cubes by heart. Example 1. Calculate the following. Here we have the fraction 2 over 5 that should be squared. When a number is squared, it means you multiply that value by itself. And now we know that to multiply fractions, we multiply the numerator and then we multiply the denominator. Instead of writing out the value twice and then multiplying, I can now make the conclusion that when a value is squared, I can skip immediately to the answer by simply squaring the numerator and then also squaring the denominator. Next, if we have a look at B, you can simply write the answer by squaring the numerator to get 9 and squaring the denominator to get 49. The same rule applies when you are cubing a fraction. You can simply get the cube of the numerator and the cube of the denominator separately. In example 2a, we now need to calculate the cube of minus 1 eighth. I'm going to start calculating the cube of a minus and cubing a negative value will always give you a negative value again. Next, I'm going to determine the cube of 1, which is 1. And lastly, I will determine 8 to the power of 3 and that is 512. In B, we now have a mixed number that should be squared. So my first step will be to rewrite the mixed number as an improper fraction. Next, I will square 11 and then also square 4 to get my final answer. In C, I still have a bracket that needs to be squared, but inside the bracket I have two fractions that I first need to add up. And to do that, I get a common denominator of 6. When I now change the first fraction to an equivalent fraction on 6, I will have 3 over 6 and add to that 5 over 6. This means I will have 8 over 6 that needs to be squared. Now you can choose to either first square or first simplify. I'm going to simplify by dividing the top and bottom by 2 and now 4 over 3 has to be squared, which will give me 16 over 9. When we now come to square roots and cube roots, we will once again use this same rule and calculate the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator separately and similarly calculate the cube root of the numerator and that of the denominator separately. In example 3, we need to calculate the square root of 9 over 25. So I'm going to determine the square root of 9 and the square root of 25 separately. In B, we need to determine a cube root. The cube root of 27 is 3 and the cube root of 125 is 5. In example C, we now need to determine the square root of two terms. The first term is a mixed number, so I'm going to start off by changing the mixed number into an improper fraction. Now I can still not determine the square root because I first need to add up the two values. For that, I need to get a common denominator and here that will be 4. My first fraction's equivalent form will then be 6 over 4 and to that I add 3 over 4. So I need to get the square root of 9 over 4. To do that, I determine the square root of 9, which is 3, and the square root of 4, which is 2.